My robot vacuum cleans my house every single day, but I haven't seen it for weeks. I'll show you where it lives during the day and some easy automations to keep it out of sight and out of mind. Welcome back to Future Smart Home. My name is Ben and this channel is all about simplifying your life with smart home technology. For a long time, I was skeptical of robot vacuums because I absolutely hated how often they get trapped and I loathed emptying the dustbin every few days. And on top of that, they're a bit of an eyesore. But now I have none of those problems and I wanna show you how you can do this too. There are three ingredients to keeping a robot vacuum out of sight and out of mind. A self-emptying robot, a great hiding spot, and some smart automations. A robot vacuum with a self-emptying dock is an amazing improvement. We have a Roborock Q5 Plus, which I love, but there's lots of other self-emptying models out there. What's so amazing is that we can run our robot every single day for six to seven weeks before I have to change the bag. A self-emptying dock is so much better in every single way and worth the extra money. The only downside is the self-emptying dock is bigger than the charging docks you might be familiar with, which is even more of an eyesore. But I've got a solution for that. Maybe you've seen some crazy videos of people building robots into their kitchen cabinets. That honestly felt like a ton of work to me. What we did was a lot easier. Like us, you probably have a couch somewhere in your house, but you might not have a table behind your couch. I found out that this is actually called a sofa table. Who knew? I built this myself, but you can look online. There's probably lots of options out there that will match the height of your couch. Now you might be thinking this isn't gonna work in my room. I already have limited space, but somewhat counterintuitively, pulling your couch out from your wall a couple of inches actually makes the room feel a lot bigger. And it's a really convenient place to put a drink, a book, or any other kind of decor. But the best part is, it's actually a great place to hide your robot vacuum, even with a self-emptying dock. The robot dock sits under the table, and when the robot is ready to clean, it rolls out from under the couch. If you were a guest in our home, the only way you'd know we had a robot vacuum is our kids would probably tell you there's a robot that hides under the couch. Every few weeks, I do see the robot when I change the filter or clean some of the hair from the brushes, but it's really infrequent. By the way, while we're under the couch, I just thought I'd let you know I started this channel about six months ago. I'd love it if you consider subscribing so you can see more videos in the future. Thanks. Even if you have a couch that isn't up against the wall, a sofa table like this can totally work for you. If the table doesn't have sides, you might just have to have a plant or some sort of other conveniently placed decor to hide the robot from view when people are behind the couch. Just make sure with all of this to take some measurements of your robot vacuum, the dock, your couch, and the sofa table you're thinking about. As long as there is enough clearance underneath, you should be good to go. Before I get to the smart automations, I wanted to talk about robots that have mopping attachments and cleaners. We don't have a mopping robot, and there are a few reasons for that. One of the real benefits of our robot vacuum setup is I really don't have to think about it for weeks at a time, which is amazing. But that just isn't the case with most mopping robots. Most of them require you to empty and refill a reserve tank every few cleanings or on a regular basis. And I've just seen too many horror stories of people finding mold and all sorts of stuff in their tanks. However, that will probably change in the future. Something else I've been noticing is that some of these mopping robots now include a water changing system that hooks into your water supply. When that happens, I might think about investing in a mopping robot, but until then, I like to stick with what we have. One thing to note, in terms of navigation, there are really three types of robot vacuums out there in the world. The most basic is a robot that drives around in a random pattern, bumping into everything and changing up direction. If you tried a robot three or four years ago, you probably tried one of those, and they really aren't that great. The second method is what iRobot has popularized, which is something called VSLAM, which stands for Visual Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. It uses cameras, so some models do have trouble at night, but they are in some ways better at obstacle avoidance. The last is what we have, and that's a LiDAR robot, which stands for a light detection and ranging system. It uses a pulsed laser on the top of the robot. Pretty much every Roborock vacuum uses LiDAR, and you can always tell which robots have this because they usually have a circle on the top that spins. Now I mentioned smart automations, and this is the last step to make sure you rarely see your robot vacuum. 
We have motion sensors throughout the house, so I've set up an automation that in the evenings, when there is no motion detected downstairs for a given amount of time, the robot vacuum is clear to clean. That's usually when we're upstairs putting our kids to bed. If you have a LiDAR robot, you can also run it in the dark, so you could totally have it running while you sleep. Though I'll admit it, I still hear it bumping into things sometimes, and that might be a bit alarming in the middle of the night. Another tip is to set up smart no-go zones, which I use to ensure the edges of our carpets aren't somewhere the vacuum cleans, because I found that is usually the reason it gets trapped. You can see how I set those up in the Roborock app, and if there's ever somewhere else that it gets trapped, I just add a no-go zone. In Home Assistant, this is a really easy automation, but you can also do this with other platforms too. Every few minutes, the robot checks to see if there's no motion for a certain amount of time, if it's after a certain time of the day, and if it hasn't already run today. Once those three things are true, it starts to clean. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.